Gibson, Roger Steele, Roger Dennis, to all the missionaries in the house, and to my wife, to the Scotland in our absence, to each and every one of our house here this afternoon. I just want to greet you in the sweet name of Jesus. I'm truly grateful for the Lord for giving me the strength to be in the sanctuary one more time where we can meet together, where we can reason together, where we can just share the word of God in a way that we will be able to we'll be able to learn more about him and his saving grace. So at the end of the day we will be better able to stand and also that we spend sitting at the back. Here. We are waiting that Monday is moving just coming in also. Tonight is our first Bible class service after convocation and uh, you know I can't stop talking about this convocation. You know Every time I open my mouth, I must mention about this convocation. Because this convocation is a convocation with a difference. And we can say that our prayers have been answered. For so right through the month of September, when we were praying, and you know, we all are praying and pray that this convocation will be a convocation with a difference. Not an ordinary convocation, not a convocation that we have been experiencing all over the years, but a different way. And God moved in a different way through this convocation that we have never seen the Lord move in such an awesome way. And I'm grateful for the Lord and the God that we serve. And it gives me more strength to stand up for him. You know, and I recognize that one of our weaknesses in standing up for God is our mind. You know, our mind plays a very important part in our standing up for Jesus. Because sometimes we want to stand but our mind is telling us otherwise. You know, so I will be talking about the mind this afternoon. This is where I will be focusing and our lesson Romans twelve and verse two said and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world. Here Paul was writing to the Roman brethren. Because Paul recognized that the mind played a very important part in a believer's walk with God. So Paul said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not be conformed to this age. Don't fashion after and adapt these external customs that we are now seeing, but we are to be transformed, we are to be changed 
Right? We have to be changed by the renewal of our mind, the renewal of your mind. You should have new ideas, new ideas, new attitude. This is what Paul meant when he said that we should be renewed in our mind. We should have new attitude toward God. No longer we will just be just existing or just taking it for granted or just you know, just be coming to church and say, boy, I'm a Christian, so I must go to church. I was baptized in Jesus' name, so I must go to church. It's more than just a ritual now. We are to be renewed, be changed. Our attitude towards God must be different. Our attitude towards worship must be different. Because the, the mind is such a powerful tool that we can't afford to waste the mind. It's such a powerful tool that if we don't use it wisely, it will destroy us. So this is why Paul said we are to be renewed in our mind because if we are if our mind are not renewed, we will not be able to stand up for Jesus. And here according to the book of Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 says, says Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The art, keep thy art with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. This is where all the issues exist. The issues of life exist in the art. And it's the mind that takes whatever is in the art and sends it out. It's conceived in the art, it's there in the art, but the mind is what bring it out. So if the mind bring out a negativeness out of the art, that is what is in the art, and the mind bring it out, Robert. and once the negativeness comes Robert. out, then we right. find ourselves in right. problem, because each time a negativeness comes forth, because we will go in on and we will say, boy, the mind say, boy, I can't make it enough, can't make it at all. It's too hard. Too much work time around us, struggling here. I can hardly find a job. I can hardly find a nice dinner. The mind is telling you all of this, and if you allow the mind to take control of your body, take control of your heart, and bring all these negativeness, it just pass over not only on yourself but it's filtered out to others and it starts to affect others. So it is essential that we, we guard against what the mind thinks, what the mind has in itself, you know, because when we start to think on these things, the mind starts to work on these things, this is how depression comes about. And this is why we have so many depressed people around, because the mind tells them that why it's hard, it doesn't make, no make sense to try, you can't come out of that, it doesn't make sense to do that, you can't get better. The mind tells you all these things, so every time you start to think, it's pure distress, pure negativity, so it's burden you down. So this is why Paul said that we are to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. You know, it's not just to say we go down in water in the name of Jesus and be baptized in Jesus' name and we receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost. That is not all. That is not enough. If, if we go down in the water, baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost and your mind is not renewed, we just get a bath. It's just a bath we get. We just wait up ourselves because if your mind is not renewed, you might still do the old Adamic thing. 
it. If I still do what the old man tell you to do, if I still hate your brother, if I still despise your friend, if I still you know, be, be persecuted of the truth, if I still do this, the works of the flesh, because the mind is not renewed. But when the mind is renewed, you don't need no evangelist to tell you to walk right. You don't need no overseer to tell you to live right. You don't need no bishop to, to be following you to see where you are going if you are going in the right place. Because your mind is renewed. And because your mind is renewed, then you know exactly where to walk. You know exactly what to say because the mind is renewed. So we want to understand that we are to be careful of what we 